Hi everybody, this is Landon from the uh, Retro Junkie Super Show. Just wanted to take a moment to let you all know that we will be recording a podcast this coming Saturday. Rob and I will be. If you want to be a part of this podcast, uh, through your comments, visit our Facebook page, the Retro Junkies Network, or the Retro Junkie Super uh, Show fan page and comment on the, the topic that we'll have. We'll be posting that kind of throughout the week. We've already done one post, and probably after recording this, we'll do another one, just to kind of remind folks what the topic is and get their input on it. But today, I wanted to play a little bit of a game that means a pretty significant uh, game in my life. It means a lot to me. Uh, the game that we'll be playing today is Trojan for the NES. Uh, I'll probably go into the back. Well, I probably won't. I'll go into the backstory and I will go over, you know, what this game means to me, some of the gameplay, some of the history, and yeah. So, with that being said, let's grab our trusty Dr. Pepper and get ready to play. Enjoy. Okay, everybody. Here we have Trojan for the NES. It was released in 1986 by Capcom in the arcades and it was released on the NES in February of 87 and on the Famicom in Japan in 1986. Um, as you can see there's a one player, two players, and a VS game. Now the one player is pretty uh, easy to understand, it's just you playing by yourself. Two players, you take turns, uh, when player one dies, player two takes over. And the VS mode is kind of an early prototype, in my opinion, for Street Fighter. I mean, Capcom made both of them, so, you know, it, it would make sense that this is an early prototype for Street Fighter. And the reason this is a Street Fighter-type prototype game is because you start out in a one-versus-one battle, and you have your characters, and you have your health bar, and the point of the uh, battle is to knock your opponent's health down and win the point. When you get three points, you win the game. The uh, players are the same in VS Battle. They have the same abilities, speed, and strength, so nobody has an advantage over somebody else. And this was a really fun mode to play whenever you didn't really want to play the main game, but you still want to kind of play Trojan. Now, the gameplay in Trojan is fairly simple. You go from left to right with your sword and your shield, taking out enemies, or not taking out enemies if you don't want to, uh, but you do need to take the ones out in front of you because they will hurt you if you don't. You need to uh, go to the end of the level, and there are two levels that make up a stage. The first level, you fight the mid-boss and destroy him, and then you go to the second part of the level, or the second part of the stage, if you will, and that uh, is the boss level. Now, here we are. This is kind of the map of where you need to go. And here we are on level one. Now the story behind this game is pretty awesome, I think. Uh, back about 87, 88, my two cousins had turned 16, they were into cars and girls, they had an NES and three games. Oh look, there's Jumping Jack, sorry I have, uh, I always call that guy Jumping Jack, I call him Goblin, that's just the family nickname for him is the old Jumping Jack, but um, the sewers in this level, well, in all levels, actually, contain power-ups that are hidden in the wall. And what you have to do to unlock them is you have to hit the wall with your sword or with your fist if you uh, lose your sword and shield, which I'll get into in a little bit. But they uh, range from everything from one-ups to power-ups to health to boots to help you jump out of the sewer to weapon upgrades. But anyway, back to the story with my cousins. They sold their NES in their three games. They had Kid Icarus, uh, Super Mario Brothers, and Trojan. Now, as a kid, I remember Kid Icarus and Mario, you know, being kind of cool. I really liked them. But Trojan stood out in the office. Those uh, Hatchet Brothers, as I call them. They're, I think there's something else in the manual, but I always call them Hatchet Brothers. Uh, but Kid Icarus and Mario, sorry, I'm just like bouncing all over the place. But they, uh, they stood out to me because they were you know, Nintendo franchise games, and they were fun, but this one wasn't Nintendo brand, I remember, I remember thinking, Capcom, hmm, that's, that's different, um, it doesn't say Nintendo all over it, like, uh, Kid Icarus and Mario, and, I don't know, I just fell in love with the game, I used to pretend that I was the, the main character, the hero in Trojan with the sword and shield when I was a kid, and I'd go out and beat up on trees and stuff with my plastic sword and shield, pretending they were bad guys, but anyway, the, uh, the gameplay, great game, you, uh, you go left to right, 
in most levels. There's a few levels where you go from top to bottom using elevators, and then you fight the boss, but we'll get into those in a little bit. But anyway, I bought the, the game, loved it, fell in love with it. I uh, really, really like the uh, the style, the post-apocalyptic. The, the story of Trojan is set in a post-apocalyptic world where you've been hired by a government to destroy an evil dictator who is trying to take over the world and destroy it. And the good guys aren't going to have any of that, so they hire you to take care of it. Now, right here is a, a P, and the P upgrades your sword. It makes it stronger. The... Uh, the upgrade for the sword is almost essential in this game, I think, if you want to breeze through it. I mean, you can play it without the upgrade, that's fine, but what the upgrade does is it takes more health off of the boss battle fights when you fight the boss, when you hit it. And we're getting ready to come up on a boss fight. Uh, I believe the guy's name is Iron Knuckle, and what he does is he throws knuckles at you. When I was a uh, kid, I kind of thought Iron Knuckle was like blowing breath at you or something. But he's really just like shooting a knuckle at you. And we just barely had all that pop with one health. Good grief. Fine. Not as good as this game as it used to be. But you, uh, you go from level to level. Cause, see, now we're in the woods. And one of my complaints about this game, though, is that the levels are a little inconsistent. Some are really, really long. Like, I forget what the name of it is. I always call it the Sewer City. But this one, uh, the level uh, two, the first part of the level, is kind of short. I mean, all you gotta do is just avoid the guys with the crossbows, beat up a few enemies, and beat the mid boss here, and you're done. But, uh, you know, I like the graphics of this game. Even as a kid, I thought the graphics were really cool. Um, not as cool as the arcade. The arcade, of course, has super stellar graphics for 86. And if you want to play the arcade version of this game, it's on one of the Capcom compilation discs, I believe. Um, this game is apparently not... It's kind of rare, but not really. I've not seen it in any places, but that doesn't mean that it's hard to find. I just live in an area where retro games are kind of... Especially unique ones are kind of hard to find. Uh, this level, you're in a lake, as I call it. I call this the lake level. And there are fish and helicopter guys all other kinds of obstacles that you have to use your shield to block with. And that's another cool thing about this game is you don't have to dodge everything. If you see an attack coming at you that you don't think you can dodge, you can throw your shield up and try to block it. Now, you can't block every attack. There are some enemies that throw knives. They also throw uh, what I call little fireballs, and they will knock your uh, sword and shield out of your hand you want. And, uh... I'll try to get one of them to do that here in a little bit. I know there's some in the elevator, what I call elevator action level. And uh, here's Jumpin' Jack again. He's got a little bit stronger this time. He, uh, he's got stronger spines. Oh, hit me. Oh, gosh. Man, another one health victory. These are making me old quick. But here's the map. We're going down in the elevator level now. What the uh, purpose of this level is is to go from left to right and work your way down the elevator to get to the boss. I think the boss here was the guy. He was like Iron Muscle or Super Muscle or something. I just called him the big guy with the club. And he, he's pretty. he's got a pretty cool enemy design. That's another thing I like about this game. The, uh, the bosses are pretty cool. You know, you had the Iron Knuckle who could shoot knuckles at you. And you got the, uh, the Muscle Man who has a huge, like, club that he beats you with. Uh, those little bombs are annoying later on because they just start falling out of everything and chasing you around. Uh, here's Muscle Man. He kind of looks like somebody off of Mad Max, but I always thought of when I saw him. He kind of looks like one of the uh, bad guys in that movie. A lot of the guys in this movie kind of remind me of Mad Max now that I think about it. And you know, the whole post-apocalyptic theme and setting, that, that kind of fits in. But I uh, just saw some Hammer Brothers. There's a, a knife guy. Oh, and see, there we go. I lost my sword and my shield. But the cool thing, or the cool thing is, when you uh, lose your sword and shield, they come back later on in the level, and you can just pick them right back up and continue. But when you don't have the sword and shield, you're, uh, of course, you can't block. You can attack more, but you can't block. Um, you can 
kick, you can punch your guy. He's a, he's a martial artist. He kind of, uh, I kind of want to say when I was a kid, and I know this is crazy to think, but when I was a kid, I used to think that was Chuck Norris, you know, because he's a red-haired guy wearing blue jeans and beating people up. So, I mean, he, he could be Chuck Norris. You never know. I know in the arcade, I think he was kind of a uh, blonde hair, maybe a brunette type guy. He wasn't a red redhead like he is in this one, but that's all right. Uh, gameplay still the same. Good controls in this game, too, by the way, which I didn't mention. The controls in this game are excellent. And they have to be, because you get in some pretty uh, pretty tight spots in this game. The, uh, the number of enemies overwhelming you, uh, the boss fights, all that, they, uh, they need to have pretty good play control. And as you can see, I've, I didn't mention this before, but I've lost my uh, power-up on my sword. And that's one thing you don't ever want to do in this game if you have the power-ups is die. Because you'll lose all of them. But had I kept that power-up and made it to the, uh, the next level, I mean, uh, what I call the sewer city, you, uh, you find another power-up in one of the sewers, and it either triples or quadruples your sword's power. I can't remember. But I know you can take the final boss out in about three or four good hits. Um, again, I can't say enough about this game. It's kind of the game that got me started into gaming. It and Kid Icarus and Mario, again, those three will always hold a special place in my heart. Um, I don't know, I just always liked this game. I thought the, the concept of a dude fighting with a sword and shield and just kind of fighting for justice was a, was a neat idea and a neat idea for a game. And Trojan just kicked my butt. Um, this guy's Trojan. This is who the game is named after, which I never understood why it was named Trojan. I mean, he's a cool enemy and all, but I don't know. It's a cool name for a game, by the way, but I don't know why he was named after a mid boss. I'd be like naming the next Metal Gear game uh, Metal Gear Sniper Wolf, which I don't know. I play. I mean, I don't know anything against Sniper Wolf. Uh, here we are trying to beat Trojan. I think this is going to go to the to the bitter end, man. We're neck and neck here. Oh, oh come on. Quick turtling. There you go. Three more hits. Three more hits. Had I had the power up, it would just be like two. Oh, I hit him. He hits me. Three to two. Two to two. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, no. But anyway, that's Trojan. Uh, great game, great gameplay. Can't say enough about this game. If you have a chance to pick it up, please, please, please do so. Um, I know my cousins. You know, I've always thought they had really good taste in games, and this just kind of kind of cemented that fact. Uh, Trojan did to me. I love this game. I can't recommend it enough. If you can play the arcade, play it. If you can play the uh, the NES, play it. I mean, they're just really solid action games. They're not deep. They're not going to have a profound story or anything. But it's if you like an 80s top story where the good guy's just out correcting all the wrongs and all the evils, then, then Trojan's the game for you. All right, folks. So that's Trojan for the Nintendo Entertainment System. I want to thank you all for watching, and as always, be sure to check out the RetroJunkies.com, uh, the Retro Junkies Facebook page, the Retro Junkies Super Show fan page, and all the other shows that are a part of the Retro Junkies network. You know, this is a, a great network of informative podcasters and game enthusiasts. Uh, we like to get together and talk games, uh, you know, in a family-friendly setting. We try not to curse, uh, try not to do anything vulgar, so, you know, you can bring your kids along if you want them to kind of learn the... Uh, the awesomeness that is retro gaming. I uh, want to thank you all for watching, listening, and supporting the network and the Super Show. And again, this uh, coming Saturday, we're going to try to record a uh, podcast for the Super Show, and your your feedback is greatly appreciated. I uh, just want to thank you again. Uh, comments, likes, all the uh, all the pandering for. Uh, for good kudos is welcome. So uh, anyway, I thank you again, and I'm going to go eat some lunch now. Enjoy. <laughs>